The maximum size of farms in the farmer was replaced is now 32 by 32. Say you wanted to take this image of yin and yang and display this on the farm. How would you do that? We can treat this farm as an image that contains 1024 pixels or 32 by 32. Using this, we can strategically till soil on the farm to create a black and white image. So we can now treat hay as a white pixel and tilled soil as a black pixel. Then using a single drone or multiple drones, we can draw the image onto the farm. Uh, this can be done with images and even GIFs, but only really works well when the image or GIF is black and white. So let's see how we would create that binary 2D array that would represent our image. So to start off, I'm going to create a script. Let's go ahead and create a virtual environment. Let's activate that virtual environment. And now I'm going to install NumPy, as well as the Python image library. All right, we're first going to import our dependencies like that. And now let's import the image itself. So I'll say image equals image.open. Now I'll resize the image to make sure that we're working on an image that's 32 by 32 pixels. And we will also convert this image to grayscale. This is not too important because the image is already black and white, but in case we want to in the future support images that have different colors, uh, we're going to include that. Now we're going to convert this image into a NumPy array. And let's print what this array looks like right now. So you can see this image has a ton of values. So it, it's a 2D array um, and each item within that array, as we talked about, is a pixel in the image, and they range from 0 to 255. So 0 being the darkest pixel, 255 being the brightest. So if you look at the image itself and compare it, you can see that each pixel that's bright white on here corresponds to a 255, and the dark ones here are zeros. So what we want to do instead, we don't care about, you know, how bright each pixel is in a range from 0 to 255. Like sure, there's some that are 6, maybe because there's some grayness or blurriness between the spots where black and white um, intersect. What we want to do is we want to get a value of either 0 or 1, 0 representing this is a dark cell, so we're going to till the soil, and a 1 representing this is a bright cell, so we're going to plant hay. So to do that, we're going to convert this into a binary array. Now the more verbose way to write this would have been to iterate through each item in the array, and if that value in that array is above 128, we'll set the value to, in the binary array to 1, otherwise we'll set it to 0. This is just a one-liner version of this. So now let's convert this binary array into a list. Let's not forget to set our threshold here. So now when we run it again, we see that this is all ones and zeros in the image. And we can even better visualize this if we go through each pixel and print a zero and a one in each spot. If we do that, we can make out the little yin and yang here if I zoom in where all the zeros are. So we've, we've created this 2D array of zeros and ones representing this yin and yang image. So now all we need to do is we need to feed this data uh, to our drone and have it go along the farm and till soil accordingly. So what does the drone script actually look like that creates this farm from the image? So to start off, I'm just going to run a clear. We're going to create this global variable called current column. Um, this is something needed for the multiple drone implementation. And then we're going to create our frame. I'll just create it as an empty list right now, but eventually this is going to be a 2D array that represents our pixels. So the first thing I want to do is I want to move south. Um, this will get us in the top left corner. And this is just because the images, as they're represented by the image library in Python, the 0, 0 coordinate is actually on the very top left, whereas 0, 0 in the farming game is the bottom left. Um, so it's just easier to start from 0, 0 as it's represented in the image, and then move the drones accordingly. So we're going to say for each column in the frame, in the image frame that we're passing in, we're setting this global current column to the column of the frame as we iterate through. I'm adding this in just to make sure we don't try to spawn any new drones when we're already at the maximum number of drones. I'm going to spawn a new drone that runs a custom function called run column, and then I'm going to move the master drone south. So now let's define what this individual drone action is. I'll define this up above. What, what does it mean for, and actually this should be called, actually let, let me rename all these because the drones are actually running along rows, not columns. It's going to access the global variable current column. Um, this is the way that we can pass data into child drones in the farmer was replaced. We need to set a global variable, and then that drone, when it first spawns, it's gonna get a copy of that global variable, and even if that global variable changes in the, changes in the future, it's gonna retain its copy, which is helpful for us in this scenario. Now we're gonna go through each pixel in the row. If that pixel equals one, which is the same as just saying if pixel, we're gonna check the ground type. If the ground type is soil, 
let's till. This means that we want the pixel of one to, to be planted as hay because hay is what we're considering our white pixel. Otherwise, the pixel's uh, zero, that's the dark pixel, so we're gonna make sure that that cell is tilled. So if that cell is not currently soil, we're gonna till. And then after all that, we're gonna move east and we're gonna keep going along the row until we've gone along every single pixel in the row. And we need to initialize this list of drones before we actually append things to it. So now let's run our image script and get uh, the value for frame here. So now that we've got our frame set and we've got all the code supporting spawning drones, let's pull this into the game, paste this code in here, and now let's run the script. And there you have it. The master drone went along. It went south along each cell and spawned new drones, and each drone's job was to look at that list of pixels in the row that it's targeting and till each spot that uh, has a zero as a pixel and ensure that grass is growing on any cell that has a one. So if we want to convert GIFs instead of images, there's just a few notable differences. Um, so I've taken most of the code from the image conversion script. And what you'll notice here is that when we open the image, we're actually starting with a pointer to the very first frame in the image. Uh, we're getting the matrix for that one with the same mechanism of using the threshold and converting each pixel to one or zero. Um, but we're actually running a seek afterward um, at the current pointer um, the, in, within the image stream plus one. So we're going through each frame in the GIF and appending them to this overall list of frames. So for this script, we're pointing to the yin and yang spin GIF. One other difference is that instead of outputting a list of 2D arrays of zeros and ones, let's actually convert each row into a number. And as you can see, when I output the frames for this GIF, uh, we're getting a range of, we're getting lists of numbers instead. And each of these numbers is gonna represent a row. So we're, where the row is zero as an integer, uh, that's a row with basically all zero pixels, so all haze all the way across. However, if that row has an integer higher than zero, that means there's some some tilled soil within there. So there's some black pixels within that image. We're basically converting those ones and zeros into a binary number and then taking the integer form of that. So we're storing the data in a compact way. And the reason I'm doing this is because I've seen my game freeze when I've tried to paste in, you know, lists of 200 2D arrays, um, it, the game just doesn't handle it well. So the easier way to do this is just convert these rows into individual integers instead. So where we would have had a list here of 32 different ones and zeros, instead we just have this number representing that. So now we need to update the script that actually, uh, that we run in the game because we actually need to render each frame within the image instead of just a single frame. So let's rename this to frames. And let's wrap it with another set of brackets. Let's create a function called wait for drones because each time we render one frame, we don't want to spawn any new drones until every single drone in the current frame is finished. We don't want any glitchiness of one frame blending into another. And then within the game, we're gonna to need to convert these integers back into a array of zeros and ones. So to understand how we're converting an integer back into a binary array in the game, uh, this little script here kind of visualizes what's happening. So say we passed in you know, the uh, unsigned 32-bit integer 42 into this function here, and we wanna get what what row does 42 represent? Like where does the where does the hay and the tilled soil go um, for a row that's represented by the number 42? So 42 in binary. Let me zoom in here so it's a little bit more visible. Uh, so I ran the script and the very first thing it prints is n, which is passed in uh, for the first iteration. So that's 42. So the binary representation of 42 is 10 10 10. So this script is kind of clever. What it does is um, it looks at the number uh, that's passed in, it sees whether or not it's even with the modular modulus two, and it adds the result of that to the binary string. So 42 is even. So uh, this becomes a zero and that goes into the binary string. An unsigned integer in binary format, if it ends in zero, that always means that it's an even number. And if it ends in one, that always means it's an odd number. And you can think of this because in binary representation, the very first value is two to the zeroth power, which is either one or zero. The second one is two to the oneth power, which is two, two to the second power, which is four, uh, to the third power, which is eight. So none of these other numbers can 
add any value other than two to a certain factor, which is always gonna be even. So the last bit of a binary number is always the one that determines whether or not it's odd or even. So determining whether or not this number is even determines that it has a zero at the end. So what we do is we divide this number by two and take the floor of that, which is essentially a, a bit sh a binary shift. Um, so you can see that when it comes back through, so we've done that division. Now we're in this while loop again. We've shifted this uh, integer over and now we're checking if this shifted integer uh, is odd or even. And then that determines whether or not, oh sorry, I should be pointing to this one right here. Um, and because it ends with the one, we're gonna, we see that it's using the modulus. We see that it's a, a odd number. So we add a one to the array and so on and so forth. Um, so this is the clever way that uh, we can convert an unsigned integer into a binary string uh, without the use of bitwise operators because the farmer was replaced, the game doesn't have any bitwise operators. So we need to use different techniques to do this. Let's wrap this in a while true uh, because we want this GIF to run in re on repeat. First thing we're gonna do within this while true is we're gonna wait for any drones that are that have not completed yet. And then we're gonna go through each frame in our list of frames. And before we set the global variable to the row, we need to remember that this row is still an integer and we need to convert it back into a list of binary ones and zeros first. So let's go ahead and do row list equals int to binary of the row. And let's pass, let's set the global variable that gets passed the drones to row list instead. And then let's grab this value that came from our GIF script. Let's set frames to this value. Let's copy all this code and bring it into the game. And now let's run it. And now you can see it's going through. It's planted, it's spawning each drone. Each drone is going along the row and uh, setting each cell to the pixel accordingly. And the master drone is waiting for all the drones that it spawned to complete before it starts the next frame. If we wanted to actually see this GIF in action uh, at regular speed, we can create a simulation here that runs that script and we can do a speed up of maybe 500 or something. So let me run this. And now we can see our GIF running at full speed. So yeah, that's how you draw images and GIFs uh, within the farmer was replaced. Uh, the scripts that I have work best with black and white images. Um, they will work with colored images because they'll just take each pixel and estimate whether it should be white or black um, based on the brightness of the grayscale. Uh, I can envision a script that could actually take different crops within the game because you've got carrots, you've got you know pumpkins, you've got dead pumpkins. There's a lot of different crops that have different colors to them and I can envision that it's possible to maybe take like the luminescence of each image and then map that to different ranges within the grayscale. Um, I haven't put in the work to try to see, you know, which crops would work well at different uh, thresholds within the grayscale, but I can see that hypothetically working. Uh, so I'd be very interested in if someone takes this idea and runs with it with that. Um, but yeah, let me know if you have any questions about how this works in the comments and thanks for tuning in.